Hello, I am Bentham and welcome back to Rodina, where in the previous episode we arrived on this asteroid and then sang a song for some reason and I shall attempt to never do that again and subject you to that weirdness. But uh, we've done everything we can here, we've got uh, a decryption key which we can use to uh, find out what strange messages we've been receiving other than that of uh, the Rodinas. So we'll get back to our radio and have a look at that. I think if we go through this door we end up straight there. Here we are, with the strange transmission particles, whatever they are. So, new encrypted communications, sender unknown. And yeah, there's a lot of sort of computer speak here. Um, it, it all seems to make sense, but basically I can skip over most of this. Basically, the important bits, it was last accessed a year ago by someone called A. Deneva. Some of the stuff was corrupted. My character apparently... Um, told the computer to fix it so we can have a read of what this is. So let's see. Incoming transmission. Source identified landfall class light transport. Designate CSS Vanguard. 97% confidence. Rodina, please respond. Rodina, this is Vanguard comms. Please respond. Incoming transmission. Source identified Polo class custom heavy transport. Designate Rodina. This is a Rodina mission comms. We read you. Give us your status. We saw you make a clean entry into the heliosphere and then everything cut out. Be advised, Rodina, we have hostile Xeno contract. Contract? The Xenos have presented us with a contract. It's, it's very confusing. It's not even in our language. Hostile Xeno contact. Repeat, hostile Xeno contact. We're repelling fire from two, correction, three unknown vessels. Some kind of energy weapons. Took out half of our plating before we even disengaged the liminal drive. That's not possible. The system's empty. We've got long-range data going back 40 years on this. It's always been empty. Can you evade? Re-engage liminal? Negative. We lost the primary pilot and most of the navigation in most of navigation in the first first volley. I don't know how I managed to jump that to there. That's quite an impressive leap. So we're flying blind. Liminal drive is down. The computer auto ejected everyone on the starboard side. We're trying to get some distance on the conventional thrust, but they're right on us. Plating's at forty percent. We need help here, Rodina. What can you give us? I'm not sure I understand what you want exactly. We're still five or six years away at current speed. We can monitor you, but not much else beyond that. Science Division says Xeno is a negative. It must be another colony group. Maybe someone found a faster trajectory to the system? Can you identify any markings? These are Xeno hostiles. Rodina, repeat. Xeno. E.T. Little green men. Xeno. Plating's at 30%. You need to burn your fuel reserves, or move to a faster trajectory, or, I don't know, try to blow up their transmitters with your comms. Do something. Negative. You want us to risk the entire mission with an untested trajectory? We've got millions, millions of lives here, and we're not exactly nimble. Hold the frequency. I'm getting word from command. Okay, Vanguard, I have orders for you. We need you to get as close as you can to the hostiles and then detonate your drive. That comes directly from the Council. You need to take the host hostiles out or cripple them if possible. Screw you, Rodina. Plating's at 10%. I'm launching all life pods and ordering a core eject in the opposite direction. If the hostiles follow the core, we may be able to get a few life pods into the asteroid belt and hide. Detonate your own drive. We want to live. Do not core eject, Vanguard. Repeat, do not core eject. The whole mission plan is on those cores. If they break the encryption, they'll have everything. All our tech, all of our landing sites. You're screwing three generations of lives here, Vanguard. 3% plating. It's already done. Good luck, Redina. Vanguard, come in. Vanguard comms, please respond. Any surviving Vanguard crew, this is your parent colony ship, the Redina. If you're still receiving communications, it is imperative that you contact us on private frequency 43.69376. Your survival and our survival Depends on you communicating with us. This message will repeat. So, uh, that, right, so we, we have a bit more information about exactly what happens to the Vanguard. It jumped in, expecting nothing but an empty system. Aliens attacked, uh, blew it up. They tried to get help from Medina. Medina said, blow yourselves up to help us. And they went, no, no, and, and did the best to save themselves. And then Redina is, uh... Well, I was trying to get in touch with people. I guess they now have. I'm here. They've contacted me. But there is something interesting about the communications. Because they were talking like normal people in those communications with each other. Whereas the messages sent to me by the... Like, sent specifically to me by the Redina, They're all like, oh, for the, the valor of the people and you must... Like, the, the, the people's survival rests on your brave and capable shoulders, knight of our people, and weird stuff like that. So, 
It's interesting that they're talking to me like that. Perhaps they're just trying to get my hopes up, make me feel more important, and hopefully give me a bit of motivation to actually save the day. But it's very weird. They couldn't just talk normally with me. Anyway, uh, that is enough for this uh, asteroid. Let's get into our seat. You actually gravitate into chairs, which is quite cool. So you can actually sit properly in the middle, access the station, and off we go. And we'll move on to the next one, see what we can find. I can't remember if I did this last episode, I think I didn't. Uh, but it's always a good idea when leaving an asteroid to just do a quick spin around it, uh, just to check if there's any other points. Because you often get two points, maybe sometimes three, I, f I forget if that happens or not, uh, rather than just the, the one bit of debris. But it looks like there's nothing else here, so we'll be able to move straight on. Right, let's have a look around. I think these ones that I can see ahead of me are quite nearby. This is one of the cool features of the game, that you can just pick a spot and go, OK, I'm going to go this way, and just start blasting towards it. And there are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of asteroids to actually visit. Of course, you don't want to visit all of them. You visit a few, and then uh, you're done with it, and you move on to, uh, to greater things. At the moment, there's something we're looking for, which we should hopefully find fairly soon. Yeah, I think this one's fairly close by. We'll find out in a second. It's hard to tell just how close things are when you're going straight at them. Like, everything to the side is shooting off. I think I've actually gone past one that turned out to be quite a, bit, quite a bit nearer. But here we are. And once again, we have an enemy ship. It has spotted us. Let's move in to engage, switch to combat speed, and fire. And we should be fine, because we have, like, so much more firepower than them. It's ridiculous. You, like... Later on in the game, you start fighting them in, like, groups of ten or more and stuff like that. So this is just sort of... This is target practice, really. There we go. Dealt with. And we'll see where the point is. The debris field or whatever you want to call it. There's one. Is there another one? Let's have an, a quick extra bit of a spin around. Just to be sure, we'll spin around the top two. Yeah, I think there's just the one this time. All right, whoops, nearly crashed into the thing there. Steady, steady. This is... I shouldn't really be using this speed to navigate around an asteroid. Combat speed is more than enough. There we go. I have had a bit of practice with this, otherwise I'm sure I would have already crashed into one of these fatally. Though I keep changing up instead of down, which is never safe. Switch the lights on so we can see what we're doing. And I only see one... data stick or decryption key or whatever. This is not... we are not like flat here this is this is at a, this is quite the angle let's just get outside and see how it goes we'll probably be fine if we run out of jetpack because everything's really wonky we can always use our fire extinguisher to uh to propel ourselves around because i think we might just drop when we step out here let's see oh, oh gee where are we now with we, well we were like mostly upside down this is this is quite a drop oh wow is it flipping over i think it, yeah it's it's flipping over onto the onto the stuff, other are two sticks, which is a problem actually, because when we find what we're looking for, there will only be one stick and then the thing we're looking for. Let's switch on our own lights so we can see what we're doing. It's quite the rocky area. Watch out for the ship slowly crashing down on us. A little debris around here. I just see two crates. There we go. And then over here. There we go. And, uh... It's actually just floating now. It's actually just bounced off the rocket and it is now gently drifting. Hmm. It'll land in a minute. It'll be fine. We have another communication decryption key. There we go. And then over here we have a data stick. What surprise do we have today? Anomalies in the signal field. Let me know what you think. Part one of three. There are some multi-part ones where you, you slowly uncover more of the story. Okay, Pendleton. Check out this feed. It just happened to me near the console... I just happened to be near the console when it came through. I can't locate the origin. I asked the computer three times and it gave me three different answers. My best guess is it got reflected off the gravity shadow of the drive. We've seen random radiation waves get caught up in the drive and spit out sideways before, but this looks different. I spent an hour staring at it and I'm telling you, it's not random. It was sheathed in a highly organized, tightly controlled signal and that sort of thing just doesn't happen naturally. Frankly, it's exactly what our own encrypted communications would look like if we scrambled a couple of the input factors. I'm not saying this is of intelligence, non-human origin, but I'm not not saying that either. Can you get some crypto folks looking at this? Drinks later, I'm off at eight. Sigrid, sent from my iMobile implant. Please excuse any spe spelling errors. I guess that is the future equivalent of the iPhone. And then we get this. Attachment one, and there is a save attachment button. 
This is a sort of side bit of the game, I guess, where some of the data sticks contain these weird just blocks of colours. And I guess it's some sort of encrypted thing. And I, I imagine there's plenty of people who would be very interested in, in messing about with these and trying to find out what they say. And as far as I'm aware, no one has actually worked out what these actually are yet, which is quite cool. So it's all still out there to, to be discovered. Very strange, it just, it, there seems to be just a few different colours, and then there's two random spots of black, and there's like a chain of orange at the end. Who knows, I, I don't have the brains to, to work this out, but I'm sure someone does, and maybe you are that someone. Um, yeah, you can save these into, like, onto your computer and then actually, like, analyse them with whatever, like, cryptography, so I don't know what I'm talking about now. I, so, someone will know. We'll learn one day. I'm sure it'll be quite cool. Sigrid, I got nothing. Crypto came up empty. Let me know if you see any more of these. I can't do drinks. Still trying to patch things up with Emily. Her first condition was, no, Sigrid, sorry. P. So yeah, that's something to have fun with, if you like that sort of thing. Is the ship still... It, it's still just drifting above me. Yeah, there's not much gravity here. It's a miracle I can even stay on the ground at all here. But uh, let's attempt to get back into our ship. Might be difficult. It is dropping down. Whoop! Bashed my head on it. Not a good start. Right, steady. Steady. We have limited jetpack. Easy, easy, easy. Whoop! Oh yeah, you sort of gravitate to the walkway, which is good. And then once you get in, gravity returns to normal. And we'll just uh, drift about two meters above this rock for a while. Or 20 meters is the altimeter is uh, telling me. So back to the ship, we've got an encrypted communication to read, but before we do that, I want to have a bit of a mess around with the ship, because, um... You may not like the design here, it is a bit strange and confusing, it's a bit hodgepodge, asymmetrical. Not everyone's cup of tea when it comes to ship design. And uh, you may also notice it looks very modular, and that is because you can actually change the inside. So let's do that. If we go to the airlock and we access the computer, there is a modify ship layout button. If we press this, we get a map of the ship. Here's everything we've explored. A fair chunk of it. We went to the front here and had a look around these bits. Here's the uh, uh, the cockpit. Apparently has some some toilets built in. Didn't even realize. What's the door for that? Oh, it's over here. That's a bit strange. There's the radio with its uh, transmission ready. The, uh, the double bedroom we found earlier. Office space. There's some stuff around here we didn't really look at. Somebody's office there, some storage and stuff. There's that bathroom and so on. But yeah, you can change all of this. You can go to tile sets, you can choose different kinds of uh, of uh, corridors to make or whatever you want to call it. Ship plating and stuff. So we have engineering plating, which is all sort of, it's sort of clinical, really. It's a bit weird. It's making lights flicker madly for some reason. I think it's just whenever I I go over a light that's in place, it resets it or something. See, so yeah, we've just turned all these dark, oppressive corridors into brightly coloured ones. Uh, there's also bathroom. We can just turn the bridge into a bathroom tile thing. It's all very strange. And there's also a hollow screen, which is what you see at the uh, at the front of the ship. I've now erased it actually. I don't think there's any anywhere else, but it's the thing where you could see out the front. It's the windows, basically. You can just plonk this around. I can just refill it in. And all the ceilings and walls become uh, hollow screens to see outside of the ship. And so on, and then the, the sort of uh, the oppressive corridor stuff we've got. Uh, and then if you go back, you can mess around with, uh, with entities. And just basically plonk random bits of, of furniture about. It's mostly... All just for fluff. The fire extinguisher, you can actually take them off the wall if you put them in place. Some of the stuff, there are also hollow screen items, which are just like windows. There's a couple of things that do matter, though. You can place down operations computers, uh, pilot chairs, pilot stations. And yeah, I'm completely wrecking this. Don't worry. We're scrapping this ship. I have a better design. Well, uh, a design that I like more, I should say. Pilot wave radio. So yeah, you can just design whatever sort of ship you want within a certain set of parameters. Uh, but yeah, it's very open. I've had hours of fun just designing random uh, ships in this. And yeah, I've already got a bunch that I've uh, 
that I use when I, I play this game properly. Uh, scanners is the scanning console. I haven't shown you half the consoles yet. They've not really come into play uh, so far. Uh, but yeah, let's go back to here. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff you can put in walls, of course. Uh, if I... how do I do it? I, it's, not, it's been a while since I've actually messed about with this, but yeah, I can put in diagonal corridor wall sections, which look an absolute mess as they are, but they start to make more sense once you sort of erase everything and start placing them down individually, having a look at what they look like. But yeah, uh, I long ago made a design that I really liked and decided to stick with, and I'm going to show you it in this and, uh, for the moment, use it in uh, this playthrough as well. As time goes on, I might do some redesigns and stuff, have a bit of a mess around, and uh, change things up every now and then. And uh, here it is. It's called the Equinox. You may uh, get the reference. But uh, let's uh, apply that. And then we can have a look around inside the ship. So here you go. The, the door opens and it's your new design. And oh, I can hear a, uh, a radio nearby. I think it's in here. Here we have our liminal drive. This is the engineering area. It's at the back of the ship, of course. I sort of have two of them like nacelles. That was the sort of design. At the time that I built this, I was on quite a Star Trek kick, so there's there's definitely some Star Trek influence in this. Uh, and here we've got a sort of mini bridge. This is sort of a backup bridge, um, just in case I need to get to one quickly and I don't want to walk to the front of the ship, because it is a little bit of a of a trek to get over there. The same thing is on the other side, except I haven't put anything in this room. So we'll uh, continue forward. When we arrive in the main ring, and this is sort of the, the main part of the, the ship. The entire reason I built the ship was so I could have a giant ring to walk around in, inspired by the, the circular designs of, uh, of Star Trek ships, of course. And yeah, it also gets very confusing. If you walk around it too long, you start to lose track of where you are. But yeah, we have, uh, on the outside, we've got little, these are supposed to be like escape pods. They don't function in any way. The door doesn't even close, because doors only close when you uh, walk so far away from them. But you can pretend. You can pretend that you're getting in here and, and getting jettisoned off into into the void to slowly suffocate or whatever. And there's uh, four of those around the uh, the outsides of the ring. And then here we have the crew quarters, complete with some nice windows, currently showing a view of uh, down into the rock. Have we stopped? Are we still moving? We're still, I think, slightly moving, maybe? It's hard to tell. I think we're pretty much... I think we, like, our front and back is probably stuck on something at this point. So we're mostly stable, but apparently quite sideways, but that's fine. So you get a nice double bed here, you got a you got a desk that you can sit at, you got a nice potted plant to, to brighten up the place, and you got a really spacious bathroom, basically filling all the spare the spare gaps I had here. Complete with a toilet, sink and shower of course. And uh, there are four of these on either side, so you can have uh, plenty of crew here. Definitely quite spacious. I've now lost track of where I am. Am I at the front or the back? Oh, this is the front. We'll get to that in a second. Let me go back round to the back. Uh, and I'll show you the cargo hold, which is completely pointless. I mean, most of this is. Like, the only bits that matter really are the bridge. Uh, and stuff like that. Here we go. Unfortunately, you can't stack items, so I've just got a bunch of crates on the ground. Uh, in the future, there'll be sort of more options for designing ships. Apparently, one of the things in the in the pipeline are multiple floors, because at the moment there is only one floor to work with, and I'm looking forward to have multiple floors, basically so we're going to have a proper engineering room with like a, a, a warp core going up into the next floor and a balcony going around it and stuff like that. That'll probably just be in the centre of the ship at that point. And then in here, this is sort of supposed to be like the observation room sort of thing. There's just a hollow screens in the ceiling so you can look at, at the stars go by. I could expand this, I can put hollow screens all the way around the edge and have it... Uh, like, even more of a just, like, observation deck. You can just stand in the middle and you just stood on a platform in the middle of space. Which will be quite unnerving. Ah, uh, but yeah, I managed to not get myself turned around there. Everything... Things are too symmetrical on this ship. I went a bit overboard. But yeah, here is the bridge. In a little bit of a, of a Trek style. We've got, uh, Just the one, uh... Console at the... In the middle at the front. Uh, we've got a slightly differently shaped uh, forward viewer, so we've got a bit of upwards view as well, because you can fly in first person, so it does actually matter to have uh, a nice window view. Got a couple of consoles back here, operations computers, got archives computers, scanners uh, over at the side here, uh, radios and everything. If we go through to here, this is the uh, the captain's ready room. He's got his desk, or she, uh, so that they can uh, have various meetings and such. Current view of the ground, 
and a bit of space there. <laughs> I'm not... It's hard to land on asteroids, okay? I mean, I still haven't finished, it would seem. And uh, they get a nice bathroom, complete with shower and everything. So they can uh, be ready to jump onto the bridge in any moment. And then over here we have a meeting room. Another nice space view. Another... Oh, yeah, a bit of a bathroom, but not so nice. There was a probably decorated one for the captain. This just has, like, a storage locker and stuff. So back to the, uh... Uh, to the front, but this isn't actually completely the front, so there is a little bit more to go if we go through here. We find this very weird sort of middle space. This is where, like, the problem with diagonal walls is that they sort of make everything overlap weirdly, so this all looks like a complete mess. Uh, but if you go to the front here and open this door, we have a little, little mini cockpit. I like to imagine this is some sort of detachable shuttle at the front of the ship that can fly off in emergencies. It's complete with a cockpit and all the, the, the basic uh, necessities for a ship. And a nice viewer as well. And then here, this sort of went wrong. So, the idea behind these was to make look like tiny little phone booth sized things. We could stand in them and you would just be on a tiny square of floor and there would be nothing but void around you. Basically, it's, it's uh, the ultimate hollow screen room. But I discovered a bug when I put these in place. So if I open this, it, it's, it's a void. It's a void. Uh, it just goes sort of... It doesn't actually go into space, it just goes into blackness, and I can see the rest of the ship from in here. It's a bit strange. There's the uh, the captain's ready room over there. There's the weird shuttle thing with its uh, liminal drive clipping into the wall. It's all a bit of a mess. I, I can't remember if I can jump out of this or not. I think if you if you really try, you can glitch onto the roof of the ship. But, um, yeah, so it didn't quite work as intended. But it did have uh, an interesting side effect. It does work quite well, because if you... Oh, oh yeah, I need to... Let the uh, the air pressurize again. Everything's normal there. Because normally, if you go to an operations computer and you press the open all doors command, you'll get sucked out of the uh, the airlock. You'll go blasting out to the back of the ship and go all the way out and get flung out into space, which can be quite bad. But because of the void rooms we have quite here, when we do the open all doors command, we instead get sucked into these rooms instead, which are actually quite safe. So we just end up sort of stuck here. Eventually the uh, the air equalizes and we can escape again and get back to the console. Let's, come on, you can do it. There's a lot of airflow through this doorway. Squeeze through. Here we are. Get hooked on the console so we don't get sucked away. And close all the doors again. So there you go. That is the Equinox. Uh, well done if you get the reference. But we'll get back uh, to flying. Now we have our new ship. Uh, though I guess the next thing to do is uh, check our message. But it looks like... We are out of time for today. One last order of business before we leave. Um, my current plan from the next episode onwards is not to read any more of the uh, the data sticks because uh, there's so many that it will take a million years for me to read all of it and I'm not that good at reading things as well, so that's a thing. So that, that's the plan. I'll stop reading those. I'll continue to read all the stuff we get on the actual radio, all the main story things, but all the general sort of background lore uh, I will leave other people to read in their own time. And I, I would say, that, like, it, if you think this is the game for you, I would suggest, like, doing the story yourself before uh, watching me do it, because it is quite cool. I quite enjoyed it, and uh, I think it's best experienced if you just do it um, yourself, rather than, uh, than watch me. Uh, so yes, next episode we'll have a read of whatever encrypted communication we picked up just now. And for now I shall say goodbye, thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time.